in this uh, video, we're going to talk about the topic of, um, is it necessary uh, to have a partner to get a treatment with vaginismus or is it even not so necessary? And um, for me, people, um, uh, women are coming to me uh, to, uh, um, with and without partner, but when they don't have a partner, almost all the times I get the question, can you still help me, Jacqueline? Can you still help me? And what I explain is that for me, the difference between with and without a partner is that uh, if you have the nice partner who can join you and can uh, comfort you and can help you during the process, it's really nice. But if there is a little bit of pressure or a lot of pressure, then it is a little bit difficult. And of course, when you have a nice partner, then he can be involved in the treatment also. Uh, so then it's really nice. But what I found out is that when women come and for myself, I you know, for one of the treatments, I did it by myself. And what I also find out is that I didn't felt any pressure, not as much as the pressure of the partners I had before, because they didn't press me uh, much. But I pressed myself, I pushed myself because I did. I, I want to overcome it because I was afraid that they're going to leave. But because I didn't have a partner, then it was much more easier for me to uh, get more relaxed in it and give myself some time uh, uh, to, uh, to adjust to all the exercises. And that is what I also find out with the women who come to me that it's really, uh, you can do so, so much without a partner. Um, so it's not necessary to overcome your vaginismus uh, with a partner. And of course, at the end, I will say at the end, when the penis has to be involved, and maybe you know and understand that uh, and felt that something as big as a penis, you can allow it in your vagina, then you don't know for sure if the penis also will work. So what I do in my treatment is that I, if I'm at the end, then I always say to the persons, if you met somebody and you feel comfortable with, we can do again some new, new uh, appointment and see how we do that steps. But to be honest, many times women know so well what they need to open up and they learn so much about their body, about their boundaries, what they want, what they don't want, how to explain what they want, that many times afterwards I get a message from them, Jacqueline, I met somebody and it succeeded. So it's not necessary, of course not everybody, but it's not necessary to have a partner to overcome it in the treatment, I, I, I mean. And what is your experience about that? Yeah, 100%, it is not necessary. Yeah. Uh, both routes are perfect. People experience success in one or the other. Um, and what I found is often the grass is greener on the other side, right? We have people who uh, come in without a partner and they wish they had a partner. Yeah. And in cases people are with a partner and they kind of wish they could go through this journey alone. So there's positives and negatives to both in the way that we perceive our journey to take place. Uh, people who may be with a partner, just like you said, even if the partner is so beautifully supportive, patient, calm, it's that pressure that we put on ourselves um, because there's a partner involved that we should be a little bit faster in our process and no amount of pressure no amount of expectation on ourselves is helpful it's important to remove all of that from the experience because vaginismus doesn't heal under pressure we cannot be beat the body into submission to just like hey do it faster right yeah. we need to let go of all expectation and what I find is the case uh, related to this as well is all expectation around timing. Because um, sometimes, and this is an example quite recently, 
it was someone that said, you know, Katrina, I would love to overcome vaginismus and to be able to have pleasurable penetrative sex by my second anniversary with my partner. And if not then, then by my birthday, right? And it's that sort of goal that they've set in terms of timing, which can be really nice, but at the same time, it puts a pressure on the body. And what's true, and let me know if you agree, when we remove all sorts of expectation of timing, we actually meet the time way more often than if we had that expectation because we have let go and therefore can actually move faster through the healing process. Have you found the same? Yes. For the, the example that is directly in my head is uh, some couple, really beautiful couple. And uh, she was really um, scared of many things in life. Uh, so uh, also to have penetration, but also many other things. And uh, after a while, they talked uh, with me that they wanted to get married and they want to, have, to buy a house and to have children. But they say, we're going to wait when we overcome the vaginismus. And we talked about it, how the pressure is on and, uh, and during the time, um, he said, first he said, yes, I, I don't know, Jacqueline, if it's important to wait because I still know that I want to be with her my whole life because she is, she is so great. And the way he told her, I get also a little bit emotional because I saw the love and he looked at her. I said, you're so great. It doesn't matter. Of course, I, I, I want to uh, can get inside you and, and have lovely intercourse, really lovely. But if not, I still want to be with you. And after a while, uh, I get a message from a WhatsApp message and, and uh, she uh, sent me a message and she said, I was in the mountain in Austria and he asked me to marry her, to marry me. And I get goosebumps over me. And, yeah. and I thought, wow. And not, uh, said my, um, uh, a, a few months later, and we still have the, the meetings between, but a few months later, she said, yes, we also bought a house and what they found out that uh, in that time, because they didn't, uh, they was not so busy with overcoming their vaginismus, they found out that how their sex life was, because they have a nice sex life, except they could not have penetration, that they enjoyed themselves more, each other more, and for her to open up it, it was so because he wanted to get married to her even when she didn't overcome it. And later on, after all, uh, that was the biggest surprise or not, is that I heard she was pregnant also. So it was so nice. Uh, and, and that is what, um, of course, uh, when I had vaginismus, to be honest, I did not thought much about my partners. They had to do what I said, not having intercourse, not come close to my vagina opening uh, that they had to do. And if they did that, then they can do all kinds of things. And I like to have sex with them and to, uh, um, to kiss and do all the other things, but they have to keep away from a vagina opening and don't penetrate. Mm -hmm. And when I started to, to treat other persons, and, and then I met some men and they told me about how they felt. And I was listening to them. And in the beginning, I was listening to them. And at the same time, I was thinking, I never knew how Marco or the other men in my life felt. I never thought about it because I was so busy with my own feelings of everything. That, and, then, and then I talked with my now husband, then friend. And, 
And I asked him, did you also felt the same? And he said, and he could deal with it, but he didn't felt lots of room to talk about his feeling because he knew that I already felt so lousy about myself and everything. But now I found out it's not, it's really important that uh, the man can say what they feel and what they want and how terrible it is. What I found out is that the men feel exactly the way the women feel. They also felt the shame. They don't want to talk and don't they'll dare to talk with somebody else. They also feel really a bit lousy when somebody else of his friends are talking about sex and how beautiful it is and they felt a little bit ashamed or much ashamed. They also feel like, am I good enough or am I man enough? So what I found out is that they sort of felt the same way the women also feel. So I found it really important to get also the partners to give some room over it and let the women know that the only thing the partners want is to have intercourse with pleasure for both you, for him and her. They want to feel inside and feel so close. And that is also what the women will want. <clears throat> so it's exactly the same. So why don't talk about how desperate you want exactly the same and how sometimes lousy, sad, shameful it is that you cannot do that. So it's, it's um, I found it really important that the men also get, and he, he can also say how incredibly difficult it is that he cannot have it. But for me in my practice, now for 40 year, 14 years, I had only, for all the women, I had two men who said, if we cannot overcome it, sorry, Jacqueline, I, I, cannot, I cannot stay because it's too important too. Mm. And the rest of all the persons, they say, I found my woman so incredibly. Do you look at her? Look how she looks and look how she, what she is doing. And she makes me happy and everything. So of course I stay with her. And that is also what, what many women, also myself, I was also always scared that, that the man would leave me because I was not normal, I thought at that time. Uh, but no man left me for this reason. So we have to uh, also give some room to the feelings and everything from the man. But we also, as a woman, have to trust when the man says, I really like you, I really want you, I really love you, and I want to stay with you. We have to believe so we can surrender. Yes. Yeah. And for some people, there may be a lot of pain there because yeah. partners have left because of yeah. that business. And so there's the healing around this too. And therefore, the understandability, if that's a word, about how that trust is hard to come by in a partner. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned that just to, to also show the other side of the coin where, yeah, a lot of pain may have been caused from a man towards uh, the experience of vaginismus. But I love what you said about really getting inside the mind of our partner and understanding what they're feeling. I've created three interviews with men on the topic so that we can speak about this openly and really get to a place of understanding that both people are in pain and both people are suffering in some way, shape or form. And for me, what I found to be that sort of the biggest theme related to partnerships like this is that the man feels like he is the cause of our pain. He literally is seeing that his body, the way that it is divinely created, his penis is the cause of our pain. And that is an incredibly difficult pill to swallow, especially when we believe it so deeply, right? As a man, if you believe so deeply that it's because of your body that your woman is suffering, that's incredibly tough. 
something that happened in my life with a partner at the time that was, uh, at the time I was experiencing pain with penetration and I didn't stop, right? This is a mistake that we make, which is coming from all these good intentions, but it's still quite bad for us because the cycle of pain deepened. And I remember he was inside me and I had been holding his body close to my body so that he doesn't see the pain written all over my face. And I was crying as I was trying to satisfy him with penetrative sex. And at the end of that experience, I just blurted out, I spoke what was on my mind and I told him, I just, I feel like I just got raped. And I used the R word. And man, oh man, things changed in the way that he experienced himself from that point on because it was such a sharp, like stabbing comment, which of course is how I felt, but I didn't consider how it would make him feel. And from that moment, in some part of him, he felt like the worst thing in the world. Like he felt like a rapist. And of course he wasn't because there was consent there but it really does something big to a man's psyche. And it's important that we look at this side of the story as well. And we really come together to solve a challenge as a team rather than one, one against the other. I think that is why it's so important that you say what you feel and that you understand that as a woman, that you understand that no man or almost, I, I will change, almost no man, I, and I hope the women are with a nice, lovely man, that man doesn't want to have penetration when you have pain, but you have to say it. And once I had a, a woman come to me and, uh, and sort of the same story as uh, what you told for yourself, and then the second appointment, the, the man came and, uh, and I heard between the conversations that the husband was really angry. So I thought, oh, okay. So he was here and he said, Jacqueline, I'm so angry. And I asked, why are you so angry? She said to me that I, um, I did this to her. I... Uh, and the cause of her vaginismus, because I go too far. I did things she didn't want. I did things uh, uh, she hurt. And, and then he said, and then he started crying. And he said, she never told me. She never told me. And now I'm blaming myself. I did not look good enough to her. Uh, uh, how can could I not felt that she didn't like it, uh, that it was not possible or that it was painful? What was going on with me? And then he was really, uh, so I let him talk and with all the emotion. And then I was looking at a man who was not angry, who was so sad. And he said to me, he said, and you said to her, me said to her that he was to blame and I thought ah oh, this is how she pronounced the things we talked about because she didn't want to blame herself because she didn't want to take responsibility for herself and that, that she didn't said no so we talked about it and then um he find out that I didn't blame anybody. I didn't blame her. I didn't blame him. It's a sort of something what is what can happen. Um, and the importance that how can you say something to each other? Because he said to me, how can I ever trust her to say to me what is going on? And for me, it was afterwards, it was such an emotional conversation because that was what I, fe I felt also his pain. And I think this is a problem or this is a topic for two persons when you are in a relationship. 
and two persons um, have their own place in it and there is no wrong or right. I think there's no wrong and right because most men, men and most women have good intentions. But sometimes uh, we don't dare to say the things we want to say from all kinds of reasons. Um, so what was nice is afterwards, because we had such a beautiful talk and open up, they still at the end overcome the vaginismus and they still became to trust each other. She tried to talk to her what she felt. He tried to tell her how he really wanted to get inside her, to be so close to her, to move inside her because he thought it was so nice. And he could, she allowed him to say that and she could allow, he could allow her to say, I'm just a little bit afraid. Can you please do soft or can you please do that? Or can we do the step with Jacqueline? And we, can you please hold, just do the step that Jacqueline told. And he said, of course, I'm going to do that. And at the end, they still overcome their vaginismus. So it's, it's um, of course, it sounds also a bit like a fairy tale. Uh, so of course, not with everybody that is going to happen. But it's not that everybody has to leave each other because of this kind of thing. Um, and it's really lovely to be a part of this kind of healing journey uh, that couples has. And then what I found out is that not only on the vaginismus, they overcome it. But what I found out is that many couples, because especially the last year, I had so many really young couples. And they say to me, yes, but it's not only overcoming vaginismus. Jacqueline, we can talk about everything else also. So much quicker than otherwise, because they have to talk to each other about the vaginismus and the treatment and everything. They can talk about all kinds of other topics and they open up also on other topics. And I found it so, so every time I found so nice that, that uh, doing the whole treatment, their, the whole life is getting a little bit changed and they open up both of them, not only the woman, also the man opens up. 